What's up guys? Today we got the hatch in the shop. We are finally getting to this thing because last time we had it out, it blew a head gasket and ate through the clutch. <laughs> I believe we had it out for FL2K last. I had it in the stick shift class when we ran our first eight second pass in this thing letting off. So there's definitely some more in it, but unfortunately we did hurt it a little bit. Come to find out that the clutch is just gone through and it blew a lot of water out of the exhaust. So we're thinking she needs a new head gasket as well. And we got this thing into the shop. We are pulling a you know late nighter here. I'm with my boy Brent behind the camera. What's up guys? Since he is in town. So he stopped by and there he would come help me with the hatch. So it's just like good old times, you know, me and Brent thrashing on the hatch here. What do you think, Brian? It's crazy she's running eights now. I know, it's on awesome. On the little turbo still. <laughs> and uh, we got some upgrades for this thing. So we are going to try to fix the head gasket and clutch, but we also got a couple internals for the engine that we are going to be upgrading as well. So the turbo's already off because I pulled that guy off and sent it to the guy that won it because I got the proper size turbo in right here. So this is the same inducer as the last one was but it has the bigger exhaust housing because if you guys remember when I ordered this thing, I messed up and I ended up ordering the same exact turbo that was always on the car. It was just a more updated version, but it still ran an eight on that little thing, which is nuts. And it probably would have been like an 870 if I didn't let out. So it went a five, seven flat to the eighth, the hatch was ripping. So now we'll have a turbo with a little more back housing so it can flow a little more, probably good for another 50 plus at least horsepower and go from there. And then if you look right here, we have our brand new head gasket from Cometic, which will be going on. And then we got a fresh set of rods for this thing. So we are going to be upgrading the rods in the hatch because right now the hatch has a set of like China no name H beam rods in it. I actually got the rods that are in this thing from Brent a long time ago. Cause if you guys don't remember, this is the engine that is actually out of the Routacy when it was an H series. And those rods worked great. They made like over 750 horsepower in a prelude with them at one point. They were used rods, but it's definitely starting to get to the point where I'm a little uncomfortable with those rods because we're probably going to be pushing closer to like 8, 850. And just for my peace of mind, I want to throw a little bit stronger rod in there. And that's where these KS tuned I beams will come into play. So we got those guys from our guys over at KS tuned. And we have some new rod bearings to go along with those as well. And then right here we have our twin disc clutch from our boys over at Action Clutch. Nice, fresh nice. unit right there. So we got all this stuff ready to go into the hatch here. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the clutch. We're gonna try to pull the transmission off, get the drivetrain out of this thing. We're gonna do the clutch first and then actually put it back together as much as we can. And then we're just gonna do the rods and head gasket with the block in the car. I was going back and forth with Brent a little bit. We were gonna pull it out. I was gonna put it on a stand, but you know, Brent made a good point that we basically have an engine stand right here and we can just kind of do it all through the top of the block with the head off and just pop the new, uh, rods in there. We're just going to leave the pistons how they are with the same rings. doesn't have any bad blow by or anything like that. So it should be pretty good. We'll see how far we get today. It's like 7 PM right now. So we're just going to have a late night thrashing on the hatch and getting this girl up and ready. My plan is to get it ready for streetcar takeover, which is coming up here soon. So we're going to see if we can get her up and ripping again. And then this time I'm not letting out. We're going to try to go deeper into the eights, which is crazy that the hatch is even going that fast it's So cool. on this OG setup. It's awesome. But her cage is rated for eight five. So I we might know. as well try to hit it. Gotta do it. So let's go ahead and tear into it. All right, let's go. All right, clutch is coming off. Let's see if she is burnt up in there oh, oh, oh. it is oh yeah cooked trashed look at that almost nothing left on those things those gotta be so warped oh yeah look at i mean you can just feel the crust yeah that's bad <laughs> look, there's, oh, a, there's a chunk of material chunk gone yep this clutch down is to the metal clutch is done that's why it's not look grabbing at all the, it all because look at all the dust because look, it's clamping right here and all of that is a gap all the way around because it's trying to just clamp right on that guy and right on this. That is trash. Yep, that's look at all worst. that material gone, I don't know. I've how. seen a lot and this is one of the worst. That's bad. It's bad, bad. <laughs> yep, she ate that one up. Too many all-wheel drive launches, finally get her <laughs> in. But hey, this has been in there since this engine was in the route see way back. So it put in work, it did what we needed. But now we can go ahead and throw the 
new action clutch in there. Yeah. With its new old. flywheel. And then Brent already started getting the valve cover and yep. stuff apart. We still got to get the cams out and the head bolts. I got the cams out. Oh, they are we out? We just got to okay. do head bolts. So head bolts, pop the head off, then we'll get to the pan, all that stuff. Yeah. And keep on going. Safe to say that clutch is cooked, boys. Barbecue. How you doing down there, Brent? Yeah, this is the old school way to do it. And I still do it that way. You got that thing? Yep. Started doing this in my driveway and I do it to this day. It's way easier. <laughs> you know, Slide we got a perfectly up there in good lift. Seconds. But I need the car on top of me. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> She's a good girl. It's like a cat sitting on your lap. Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just got the clutch installed. And Brent's ready to have the Civic drop down on him. I identify as trans. <laughs> <laughs> what are your pronouns, Brent? <laughs> Identify as age 22. So we got the head pulled off of the hatch here. We got it out of there and it looks like the head gasket blew on that number four cylinder. You can see how warped it is and we're even missing a little bit of material right here. So the air was definitely escaping out of that hole. I mean, we're missing material pretty far all the way down, but definitely time for a new one. Not surprised she pushed and we were running over 40 pounds of boost. So it'll do yeah, that. It, it can happen. But you guys got to keep in mind that this is the H22 that I originally put together for the original engine that went in the Radisey when it was H series because the hatches OG OG motor is tucked back over there because we had that oil pump die at the ice cream cruise while I was racing Kyle's Corvette. Yeah. And I just swapped this one in. I haven't even gone through the other engine yet, but this thing was built over f almost five years ago now. Jeez, Seen a ton of rev limiter. Yeah. It's been overheated. I don't know how many times. Countless. Made a so many burnouts in the minivan, just doing all kinds of stuff. Nuts. And it has never skipped a beat. And all we had to do was a head gasket, essentially, on this thing. Yeah. And a clutch, because it just ate it up, making so much power. Yeah. So while we're in here, though, like we said, we're going to go ahead and pull the pan. We're getting the oil drained out right now. And we'll go ahead and pop these guys out. And we're just going to swap over to the new rods, some fresh bearings, and start reassembling. We learned from those top fuel guys this weekend, so we're just... Jamming it out real fast. <laughs> yep. I mean, they would have had like three new motors in by now, but <laughs> we're getting close. We're doing our best. Yeah, we're we also good. don't have 12 guys working on it <laughs> yeah. at once. <laughs> we're, we're hauling ass. All right, guys, we got the first piston and rod pulled out of the hatch. And great news the rod bearing looks almost brand new still. I mean, it looks absolutely beautiful. You know, just very, very minor wear. The oil looked great when we pulled it out. So the bearings are looking awesome. I was just a little worried about them because. When we launch this thing, it does dip in oil pressure sometimes on the launch, and it's just taking beating after beating, and with how much abuse we put this engine through, we just wanted to make sure that the rod bearings were okay, and obviously, since we're going this far, that's why I wanted to go ahead and upgrade the rods since we're digging into this thing, and we want to make a little bit more power, but we had a bit of a delay, boys, so me and Brent have been uh, figuring some stuff out for about the last maybe hour, hour and a half, yeah. we ended up digging through the old videos back when I rebuilt the Routacy or when I first built the motor for the Routacy uh, six years ago now because we put these rods on top of each other to compare to make sure they were the same ones and it's going to be hard to see on camera here but if you look so right now the wrist pin is holding the tops together oh, you see it but if you look right here the new rod is actually just a little bit longer which uh, threw us off a little bit, so. A lot bit. Yeah, a lot of bit. We so, had to phone a friend. Yeah, so what that means is that one of these is an H23 rod and the other one is an H22 rod. So the ones I ordered are an H22 rod. And to my understanding, every single component in the Routacy's engine was an H22. I put an H22 crank in it, H22 rods, that's what I, thought at least. So we went back, looked through the videos. It took me a while to find it, but luckily I documented everything. And I got these rods back from my boy Brent way back in the day when everything I had was just lying around at PFI and I'd go grab some rods. So they had these and they were just no name H beam rods for an H series. 
and I put them in the Routacy's OG H22, which is now the engine in the hatch. And it turns out that we had an H23 rod on an H22 crank. And what that means is that the whole time, the Routacy was actually down on power a little bit. <laughs> a little because bit. Because these rods are shorter than they were supposed to be. So we were actually worried because Brent was like, oh, you have to have an H23 crank in that thing. And like, we were just going back and forth like, you know, where did all this stuff come from? So I went back, I saw my video, I confirmed with Braceface Kyle. I'm like, yeah, I got this crank out of a stock H22A. I had it checked. I think I said in an older video, I did get the crank checked and it was straight. So I know it's not uh, bent or anything, but I did not get it polished or anything like that. So everything should be in factory spec, like for sure. Cause I got this crank out of a bone stock H22A and it looked like it was in good shape. I told Brown, I was like, I swear it's an H22 in there. But there was one video where it was like, the crank had a spun bearing. Yeah. So I was like, maybe it's Yeah, all... maybe I got a different H23 crank yeah. from Brent. Cause also the Prelude has an H23, but to my understanding, the Prelude was the first uh, H22 vehicle with an H23 crank setup I ever had. And I didn't even know you could put the H23 stuff into the H22. So to my understanding, like I was like, if it was life or death, I would have said everything in that engine is from an H22, the crank rods and it all. But come to find out that we did have H22 or H23 rods in there. So if you actually look at the piston, this is top dead center and it's actually sitting inside of there. Yeah. It's actually in the hole. That yeah, it's, about a, it's about a two, two millimeter, millimeter Two millimeter difference, it's not much, but if we go ahead and put this rod onto the piston here, we just popped all the rings off the piston just so we could drop it in. And then that's all the way there. Let me just rotate it to be sure. So that is top dead center. So look, yeah. this is the new rod and we are still just under flush with the deck of the head here. We do have this slight dome on the top of the piston, which barely comes higher than the surface, but that's okay. And this guy is actually sitting lower than it should be. If we had the 23 crank like you right. thought could have been in there, this would be even higher and it would definitely be hitting the bottom of our head. So and after, that's what that's what started all this. We were paranoid yeah, we're, we're like, gonna hit the head. Yeah, I was about ready just to be like, well, let's just put the H beam rods back in it because everything looked beautiful. And then we called Shane. I was like, Shane, do you remember what rods those were from? And then I went back, looked through all the videos, and then I'm like, you know what, let's just stick that piston on that rod and stick it in there and see if it protrudes. And it does not come yeah, past the it edge. It does not. It looks so, great. It turns out this whole time, <laughs> this the hatch time. has been running and the route see with the H22. It had H23 rods in it and an H22 block with an H22 crank, which means it was a couple millimeters lower in that hole, which means it was low on compression the whole time, which the isn't time. bad, but it was just running slightly lower compression. So now it's going to make couple extra horsepower that's probably good for 50 plus i mean maybe 70 100 horsepower i don't know it's gonna be worth a bunch it has to be at least like that's probably a step from like nine to one to ten to one yeah like literally the ratio i mean that's a pretty good two jump. millimeters yeah because it goes from sitting under flush here the dome of this piston is literally under the level of the deck this one will actually protrude a little bit so yeah we're definitely gonna have some more air in the hole with the bigger exhaust housing with the beefier rod we're squeezing out every little bit. So you can go 860s. My goal is to <laughs> get this thing 850 capable because we have an 85 serted cage. And if we can get the hatch right on that mark, I mean, I don't need this thing to ever go faster than that. I'll be happy with it because, I mean, that's already just flying. And then I can just put it in stick shift classes, have fun. And then eventually we'll probably pull all this out, get the engine bay painted, go over her, get her looking fully fresh and finished. But we want to try to get it ready for streetcar takeover. And we just learned a lot about this motor in the hatch. Yeah, After a digging lot. through all of the Boosted Boy videos back when I was just brace-faced going at it. It's been a long night. Yeah, been a long night. So we're probably going to actually take a break here and we're going to hit it in the morning and get everything else swapped over. And then we can put all of this back together with the new head gasket and put the new turbo and all that good stuff on and then she'll be good to go. Yeah, literally we killed an hour, an hour and a half just researching and yeah. trying to figure this out. That's funny. Though. <laughs> it had freaking crazy short rods in it this whole time. Yeah, we'll have a bigger turbo, higher compression, stronger rod. She's gonna be a beast. She's gonna go. Yeah.
all of the new rods are in, ready to go. Now we actually have the right H22 <laughs> rods to match yeah. the H22 crank. That's awesome. Gonna have a little more compression now. Yeah. You wanna turn me over? Sure. Show them the, uh, <laughs> show them the bottom end here. But we got all of those rods swapped out. Wow. Everything's looking good. So we're just using the same rings, but we re-honed the cylinders just to uh, reseat those since they're gonna be in a slightly different position. But yeah, we got the rod bolts torqued, right? Yeah, Confirmed, set. because I have forgot those in the past. I have not. I will never forget to torque the rod bolts <laughs> ever again. But we got everything torqued, the oil pan is on, and now we are getting ready to throw the head gasket and head back on this yep. thing and get her all back together. Yeah, get the head on, yeah, just about done. We also changed this heater hose back here because the other one was very crusty. Crunchy. From blowing the gasket probably it was all and so much rust inside yeah it. for some reason the hatch has always had like this nasty orange rust water and not sure where it's coming from since the whole cooling system is aluminum yeah enclosed in aluminum the box is aluminum the heater core is aluminum the radiator is aluminum and we have all this nasty orange water in there from rust somewhere so the only thing i can think is this water tube that's the only steel yeah, maybe part. the water tube or the the blades on the pump there that's about it. That's only steel stuff. But yeah, something's so. rusting in there. So it's always had that nasty water though. Eventually I want to try to probably clean it out and yeah. get rid of all that. Yeah, we'll try to flush it. But I actually have a new radiator that I'm going to put on because the other radiator's really gunky. So we're going to do our best and clean out the cooling system as well and get the engine bay cleaned up after we get her all back together here. But yeah. we're ready for the head gasket and head to go on. Let's do it. Well, she's all back together. She is. New turbo, new rods, fresh head gasket, yep. and a new clutch. She's very rich. We just gave this thing a full <laughs> once over. It needed it, so. Yeah, it's been a little abused. It's yeah, crazy, though. Just a couple of threads, too, and we just, just ran through it all. But I mean, hey, for being together for six years and that motor <laughs> yeah. just now coming apart, yeah. we will take it. Finding the low compression. <laughs> yep. Didn't even have the right rods in it. Yeah, man. She ran and drove. She's alive. She was just in pieces the other day. Yep. <laughs> it's looking great. Not bad for completely, basically rebuilding the engine and yeah. taking the trans off and doing it all in the engine bay there. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of flush out the cooling system, see if we can clean out any more of that rust, rust crap out of there. And uh, I got a fresh radiator going in it. Eventually, I'd like to replace all the coolant lines and stuff and get rid of all that rusty water. But I mean, the hatch has done that for pretty much the whole time I've had it. So it's yeah. nothing new, guys. It's just something I never showed, but it's always had this nasty orange coolant water, but- And you just, always ran water. That's just part of the hatch. Yeah, I always just put, you know, water in from the hose and let her go. Cause at the drag strips, they don't want you to run coolant or anything like that because it's harder for them to clean up where the water just evaporates off the track. That's why we've always ran water. Now here in Florida, we don't have to worry about it freezing, which is nice. Whereas in Colorado, I've had a couple engine blocks 
Yeah. Freeze up solid in Wago. So I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> Not going there again. Nope. All right, hatch is all back together here. Got a new radiator, catch cans on. All back yeah, together, new turbo, great. new rods, yeah. fresh clutch. We were in deep, but we got it. Yep, and I guess that's about all we can do right here. I mean, I guess we could try to break some stuff in real quick. We got to seat those <laughs> rings and, you know, get the bearings that's all good idea. seated to their new crankshaft. Yeah, you got to get everything moved around. And yeah, together. get everything in place. That's it. Plus, if I want to go to a race, we got to make sure it... It you know, works. runs okay, so yeah. go ahead and fire this thing up and uh, maybe give her one good launch to close out the video here. Oh, yeah. You're going to launch if it? There's, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. this is going to be great. And if there's any, uh, any, what's the word? Weakest links, we will find them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That felt pretty solid. <laughs> yeah, it looks solid. <laughs> Got a little squirrely in there. <laughs> Definitely nice. better. All right, 100% duty cycle, let's go. No, nah, I think we're good then. <laughs> we'll save it for the track. I gotta go drive it around, you know, I'll actually break it in a little bit more. <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> right to the track, brother. We just put 100,000 miles worth of damage on the engine right there. <laughs> exactly, she's broken in, yep. ready to go. Well guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Save yeah. her a quick bath, but she is all back together. It's awesome. So thank you so much for your help, Brett. Yeah, man, it's been great. Yeah, it's awesome. You hung out for yeah. a little bit, got to come hang out with us. Got to work on the hatch. Got to bring her back to life. It's awesome, man. Yes, yeah, sir. Cool. Back up and operational, boys. We'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>